Good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for joining us for the Bachelors of Science and Nutrition Programs webinar. My name is Terrence Peterson and I am an admissions advisor at Bastyr University, California. I am joined by uh, W. Bretain, who is uh, located at our Kenmore, Washington campus. She is the Chair and Dietetic Internship Director for the Department of Nutrition and Exercise Science at Bastyr University. Before I turn it over to Deborah, I'd like to outline an agenda for today's webinar. First, Deborah will walk you through a PowerPoint presentation on the program and its features. Then I will come back on and talk about the admissions requirements and how to qualify for this program. And finally, we will welcome all your questions. So please ask as many as you'd like. We wanna make sure that this program is the right fit for you and that Bastyr University will help you reach your education and career goals. So without further ado, I wanna turn it over to Deborah and uh, we'll get started. Hey, Deborah, how are you? I'm great, Terrence. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I am really excited to be with everyone today and to share information with you about our programs. So we are gonna talk about each of our three programs that we offer right now. Uh, I am coming to you from Bat Bastyr Kenmore, um, and we're excited that we are now offering uh, bachelor's programs at both of our campuses. So I also wanna introduce Dr. Neil Malik, who is our chair of the Department of Nutrition down in our California campus. He would be speaking to anyone who is interested in starting a bachelor's program there. Uh, and Dr. Malik is a, an amazing colleague and he is a, a very forward thinking uh, individual. You can see by all the letters after his name that he is a, a little bit of an overachiever and, and he's a hard worker and he's great with our students. So he's also a great advocate for those of you looking at our San Diego campus. So with that, you may have already seen that our mission here at Bastyr is to educate future leaders in the natural health arts and sciences. And we really do incorporate the mind-body-spirit connection between human nature and uh, mother nature in thinking about how we nourish ourselves and nourish the world. Uh, we help our students to not only uh, receive their education, but also to understand the dynamics of research and clinical service throughout all of our programs and the role that those create as they relate to nutrition. Within our department, we want our students to understand that both food and movement are important in establishing health. And we also want to make sure that it's clear that food choice not only impacts the individual who's consuming that food, but that their health then ripples out and impacts the health of their family, of their community, of their neighborhood, and all food choice ultimately also impacts our planet. We want students to understand that vital connection between how we choose the foods that sustain us and to make sure that we're doing that mindfully uh, for all the impacts that it has around us. In our vision of our department, we want to really be holistic. Again, nutrition and food is not a very easy thing. Despite the fact that we all eat and it should be easy, the world has made food choice very confusing and very complex. And so we definitely do want to think of a food choice and food in a very holistic way. My personal mission is to support the development of extraordinary nutrition and exercise science professionals, and we start at our bachelor's level. So whole food is at the basis of all of our nutrition programs. It may seem unusual to you, as it is to me, that there are many nutrition programs across the country that focus on nutrients and not on food. And while nutrients are, of course, very important, we believe at Bastyr that talking to people about food is really the way that we can translate the information that they most need. So you'll see here um, on the one side of the screen that the, the student in the green shirt, that is our Kenmore Nutrition Kitchen fully in use. And the other photo is our San Diego Nutrition Kitchen fully in use with lots of beautiful produce there ready to be consumed. So we do make sure that our students have that foundation in all of our programs on what is a whole food and how do we nourish with whole foods. In Kenmore, we also have a beautiful garden that we're very proud of, uh, and students have the opportunity to take courses like organic gardening and really get to the ground level of where their food comes from. 
When we talk about Whole Foods, we want to make sure that everyone understands exactly what we're talking about. And I like to give credit to Cynthia Lair, who was a long time, over 20 year faculty member with us, uh, who still teaches a couple of courses for us. She really gave us our brand of Whole Food Nutrition. And Whole Foods to us means simply choosing foods in their least processed, most natural forms. And that's what we want our students to learn about. She suggests asking these five questions if you're not sure if a food is a whole food. First of all, just as the apples here on the screen that you see, can you imagine them growing? Uh, if you can imagine something growing, it probably is most likely a whole food. How many ingredients does that food have? So the apple is an ingredient in and of itself. Uh, most whole foods have very few ingredients. Do we eat the whole food or part of the food? And what has been done to that food since harvest? So again, in the case of the apple, nothing needs to be done to it. We can pick it from the tree. We can eat almost the entire thing. Um, and we know that it's nourishing us in its current state, just as it is. And then how long has the food been known to nourish humans? We know that processed foods have only been around for less than 200 years. This is not a normal thing that happened in the past. So any food that's been on the planet and with us for more than a couple hundred years, we can be pretty sure it's a whole food. So this is what we mean by whole food, the least processed, most natural form of the food in nature. <clears throat> we also throughout our programs, again, as we said, here in Seattle campus, we talk about we are the Department of Nutrition and Exercise Science. So we do want our students to have an understanding of movement as well as food. Uh, we need that movement, that expression of energy in order to balance and, and metabolize the food that we do take in. So throughout both campuses, we do have opportunities for our students to practice those exercises and to think about movement as well. Throughout the lifespan, exercise can change, food can change. And so again, we're looking across the spectrum of all life cycles as we cover our nutrition programs. So at one end of the spectrum, we talk about the Bastyr bubble. Uh, we are into food, we are into movement. If you're interested in these degrees, these are probably passions that you bring with you as well. And this is what we think about when we think of health and we think of the education that we're providing to our students. But on the other end of the spectrum, this is more often what the rest of the world may be thinking about. There is not a tendency to move as much as all of us maybe should. There is a wide range of food that people call food uh, that it may not be the most natural form. And so we really want our students to have that understanding and to get the full spectrum of how our information can be helpful to people. We want to help our students find middle ground. Uh, students and uh, people in the field should never be food police. They should never be judgmental. Uh, we want students to take their own health beliefs and to think about how to challenge those to meet others where they are and to guide people on a very slow curve toward a more holistic way. We also want our students to understand that there is no one way to nourish oneself. There can be lots of fad diets and movements at any given time, but that doesn't mean that's the only way to eat. Fortunately, in this country, we have many opportunities to choose variety, and we want our students to be able to incorporate that into what they're learning. So we like to think of whole foods on a spectrum. If an individual is only eating fruit roll-ups as their only fruit in their diet, we would suggest to our students to guide them towards maybe trying next a whole uh, a granola bar that has some whole grain in it and a little bit of apple filling. We want people to move slowly down that spectrum. Jumping from a fruit roll-up to an apple might be too dramatic of a change and may not be something that someone's ready for. So again, we want to be very realistic in helping our students to support others in making changes in a natural and orderly way. In the same way, when we talk about exercise, we know the benefits of exercise. We know the physiological benefits, the psychological benefits. We know the impact it has on social well-being, on immunology. But at the same time, it really has to be about the wellness of that individual. How can we support their health and wellness towards building their best self? That's what it comes down to. And so again, thinking about movement in a very holistic way across the spectrum. 
So the first thing I'd like to say as we introduce ourselves to the actual programs is that all of our programs are Bachelor of Science degrees. And science can sometimes be a scary thing, but really when you think about food and nutrition and metabolism and movement, that's all they are is science. And so it's very, very critical for us students to have a very strong understanding of science in order to be able to understand our programs. So each of the programs is designed as a Bachelor of Science with majors in these various areas. All of our undergraduate programs are also completion programs. That means that you do the first two years either in a community college or a university near you, and then you come to Bastyr, one of our campuses, to do their junior and senior year. So all of our programs are designed to fill in that two-year uh, end point of a bachelor's degree program. <clears throat> in Kenmore, we also have an opportunity where students can work directly between Bastyr and Cascadia College. And in that role, we have a designed blended program where students can actually start at Bastyr earlier, as early as year two, to get some of their coursework done here uh, and get into their major at an earlier time. We also do accept some courses through ACE, the Alternative Credit Project, which offers some very economical and online approaches to getting some of those first two year courses done. And Terrence will share more with you about that. If you go to our Bastyr webpage, this is the, where it will guide you on the Cascadia Bastyr route. So again, for anyone uh, in this webinar or receiving this webinar who is local here in the Kenmore area, uh, lots more information can be offered to you about that here locally on how you can join this blended Cascadia and Bastyr program. And here's a page about the alternative credits also from our website uh, that can help you to identify which courses for which programs you can sign in on and uh, start working on right there from home. So I'm going to say it one more time. Um, all of our programs are Bachelor of Science degrees, and we are very proud of that, uh, but it also does mean that there is a heavy science load in that first year, um, but we support you through it. We have exceptional faculty members who love science and really help to align the concept of science with your interests in food, movement, and culinary arts. So the first of the three programs I'm going to talk about is the Bachelor of Science with a major in nutrition. Um, it may seem very simple to say that the emphasis is on food and nutrition, uh, and that's where you start. So in the first year, some of the courses that you see that may be common with the other programs as well is that we do teach a course called Whole Food Production. All of our students, both at the undergraduate and graduate levels, all take this course. It is a in-the-kitchen uh, course that takes you from seed to table. It's helping you to understand what food, how food is grown, how it's transported, processed, stored, what impacts processing has on the nutrient and quality value of the, of the food. And then I think the best part is that students get to go to the kitchen and actually prepare the foods. We want every single one of our students to leave this university knowing what to do with a legume and a nut and a seed and a whole grain and a fruit and a vegetable and whole, whole humane uh, humanely raised animal products in order to really create nourishing food for others. Uh, so you get to cook together and then, of course, best of all, you get to sit down and eat together. Whole food production is a, a very foundation course that all students take together. We also guide you through the cultural perspectives that happen with food, how all cultures have their own uh, uses of food, their own respect for food, the way they honor food, and we want you to understand that. Nutrition throughout the life, so the guidance of nutrition in a pregnant woman versus in an infant versus in a breastfeeding baby versus a toddler, a teen, an adult, and an elder all change over time. And so having an understanding of how our nutrient needs change as our bodies change with aging uh, is really important. Again, we want all of our students, whether you're taking an exercise science part of nutrition as well, to have physical activity and wellness under you, to understand how activity balances food intake. So all our programs include a physical activity and wellness class. And then experimental foods is about food science, which again is important to understand when you're intaking food into your body, how it then becomes a part of you and gives you energy, knowing what's in that food to begin with. <clears throat> In the second year, you're exploring the mind-body connection between food 
and health, mental health through the psychology of nourishment. You're studying macronutrients, which is protein, fats, and carbohydrates, as well as micronutrients, all the vitamins and minerals in Advanced Nutrition Principles 1 and 2. All students get an opportunity to go out into the community and practice some type of nutrition education project so that you get to actually share some of the information that you've learned with others. And then you learn about nutritional supplements and herbs, as well as the environmental impact of nutrition. And then there is a capstone course called Nutrition, Physical Activity and Disease that brings all your content together and allows you to develop nutrition education messages and programs for individuals thinking about all the things that you've learned about. So this program is really preparing students for positions such as nutrition educators who work under other health professionals or for graduate work in related health science fields. It's also the one of the three programs that allows the most elective credits. So 15 credits of the program that are required for the program are allowed as electives to allow our students to really kind of personalize this program in a way that meets their professional interests. So some students may come into this program and really want to take organic gardening and growth growing classes or may want to take some herbal science classes to supplement their, their education. Maybe some of them want more culinary perspectives and take some of our culinary classes or more exercise classes and, or a combination thereof. So this course really, or this program really allows students to, to personalize that a little bit. <clears throat> These are some of the jobs that some of our alumni are doing. So again, lots of that under very foundational uh, nutrition and food information that they're allowed to take out, use in sales, use in food service management, uh, or working under others in nutrition education programs. I do also like to always make it very clear to incoming students that there is not a scope of practice that with a Bachelor of Nutrition degree alone, can someone actually do one-on-one -on -one nutrition counseling? Sometimes students think that with a bachelor's degree, they can hang their own uh, sign and they can do a nutrition practice. There is not a scope of practice that allows for that. Uh, so we're very clear with our students in wanting to make sure that their career goals are met with the program that they enter. And any of the faculty or advisors can help you uh, to learn more about that. The next program we're going to talk about is our combined major in nutrition and exercise science. And again, this isn't uh, too hard to believe that this is uh, the best of both of the nutrition and exercise science fields. So as we talked about the nutrition degree, there is a course in whole foods production that everyone takes in the kitchen, but you're also learning about motor learning and development. How do we learn how to walk? When do we learn and how do we learn how to throw a ball? How do we know when to lift our leg when we're walking up a set of stairs? So the very foundational basics of movement. We're talking about nutrition throughout life, but we're also talking about sports nutrition. So looking through nutrition through the lens of movement. And then this course or this program also includes cultural perspectives, but it's also going into our exercise science lab and learning different techniques to work with others, learning about the different equipment, how to get the most out of movement for a variety of reasons and uh, individuals. So this program provides a very solid base in both whole food nutrition and whole person movement. It really is meant to combine that metabolic impact of both and allowing an individual to know the basics of both. There's also a practicum in this program so students are, again, getting to go out into the community and share their knowledge in a variety of different settings, getting to teach others in either public health or some kind of community setting about the combined uh, impact of good nutrition and exercise. Individuals uh, with this degree have gone on to do employee and corporate wellness programs to do personal training. Again, we I know that in many states you can be a personal trainer without any uh, degree from a university, but often our students will come to us sometimes saying, I have been a personal trainer, but I realized that I didn't know enough. I want a program that is really gonna provide me with the science so I can be assured that what I'm giving my clients is actually science-based information. So lots of our students go back to doing personal training, but in a much more effective and dynamic way strength and conditioning coaching, community health and fitness programs, 
And again, many of our students are using this degree as a basis for moving on to the ND program or dietetics or other healthcare uh, higher education programs. The third program I'm going to talk about, and this is the only of the three programs that's offered at both of our campuses. So if you're interested in the Bachelor of Science in Nutrition or the Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Exercise Science, you would need to come to our Kenmore slash Seattle campus. If you're interested in the Culinary Arts program, you can do that at either one of our campuses, either in San Diego or in Kenmore. I'm really, really proud to show these photographs that are actually taken just last week at the capstone dinner that our students did. So at the end of this program, the capstone is having the students in the culinary arts program produce a meal for 15 people that is all original recipes. And if you are as overwhelmed as I still am at looking at these photos, you can only imagine how fabulous it was to actually eat all of these things. Um, the beautiful flower that you see down at the base there is a, it was our salad course. It was actually a combination of roasted rhubarb, strawberries, beets, and a variety of greens with a gorgeous citrus dressing. All of the flowers that you see in all of these photographs were edible, so we got to eat the flowers as well. The middle picture that you see there is a sweet uh, raw corn soup with a beautiful garlic pesto on top, which was just delicious, uh, with some chive blossoms there that are at the flowers. The beautiful little rolls were also uh, very good. And then the dessert is what you see at the top there. It was a pitcher that included a smoked caramel espresso sauce that was poured over this beautiful walnut layer cake. Uh, the little dusting that you see was a lava salt there on the plate that balanced it all out. Uh, I am still um, just absolutely in awe of the meal that I had the privilege of, of eating. Uh, and this is the type of food that you'll be learning to create in your culinary arts program. So this program was created because we did have kind of these two sides. We had this very calculated healthy eating side like hospitals, schools. There were all these decisions around numbers and calculating calories. What's good for you? What's not good for you? What's the balance? And then there's this other side of just, gosh, can we just eat? Can we just enjoy our food? Can we just really focus on all the sensual energy that food brings us and really just just be with that and so cynthia lair whose photograph i showed you earlier she helped to design this concept it's like let's bring these two forces together can't whole foods just be amazingly delicious why do we have to get so worried about all the numbers and things if we're using whole foods it's got to be good so this program again is designed to have a, quite a bit of time in the kitchen uh, lots of practice in really getting to experience whole foods in a way that ultimately you understand well enough to create your own original recipes. And as stated, it is now offered at both of our campuses. So this incorporates concepts of seed to table as we talked about in whole foods nutrition, but remember it's still a bachelor of science program. So it's pretty unique. It's not the classic culinary arts program you might take it at, at uh, culinary schools. You're also getting biochemistry. You're also learning about how the body metabolizes the food that you're creating. So it really is quite unique. In addition, we're offering courses on therapeutic aspects of food and eating, while also thinking about the entrepreneurial side of a potential person who takes this degree, maybe onto their own unique plans for public speaking, business, writing, practicum. All of these ways help students practice business building skills in case they really want to use the resources of this program in their own business. <clears throat> so again, the first year, some of these courses you've already seen, but in addition to the basic courses in food science and cultural perspectives, you're also getting culinary arts one and two, where you're starting to practice your knife skills, learning how to make stocks and sauces, learning how to do baking with whole grains, making some vegetarian entrees, et cetera. And then Chef's Pantry, which is how to ferment and preserve food, uh, can, freeze, make jams and jellies and so forth, for, forth from whole foods. In the second year, therapeutic cooking. So again, if you had a personal chef client who had diabetes or cardiovascular disease or needed to be gluten-free, learning how to cook for a variety of individuals' um, disease states, 
culinary practicum, students are actually out in the field working in an in a institutional setting, so they get that practice. Culinary skills three is the uh, spring quarter class where students are, again, practicing their unique culinary skills and creating these delicious meal uh, dishes that they're going to serve in their final capstone dinner. Um, and the table photograph that you see on this slide is actually the dinner uh, before we sat down to eat last week of the students' uh, practicum setting. Writing about food and health, again, to get students to be able to blog, to write recipes, to prepare themselves for writing about food. The business of cooking helps students to think about setting up their own cooking or food practice. And then cooking demonstration, um, it is not easy just to go up and prepare a recipe in front of others. There's actually a skill to that. Some of our students from this program have gone on to do cooking classes as a career. So we teach students how to do that in this program. <clears throat> I just had to share some more photographs from our beautiful culinary capstone dinner last week. So this was the appetizer course, this beautiful quail egg that was on a bed of daikon uh, and stuffed beautifully. The pea pod uh, that they took the peas out and then mixed them with a lot of delicious things, including edible flowers. And uh, the little pillow that you see at the bottom there was actually a pillow of goat cheese that was mixed with a, a variety of flavors, rolled in some uh, zucchini strips and then tied with a chive uh, at, the, at the end there. Uh, just absolutely delicious. This was a sorbet that was a palate cleanser in between a couple of our entree and uh, salad courses. And then this was the actual entree, which was a, a beautiful dish with scallops and uh, had asparagus and a, a little salad on top. It was absolutely delicious. So if your mouth is watering, uh, as was mine after uh, having this beautiful meal, uh, please know that this plan, this program is designed to train people to have careers as personal chefs, as personal caterers, in food writing, or as food educators, cooking classes. We've had individuals with small businesses. Uh, we had someone with a very successful jam business who ended up selling the jam business and now consults other small startups in how to have an effective uh, food business. So lots of work out there available for people who just want to teach others about how to cook and how to use food. So these are our three undergraduate program choices. We are incredibly proud of all of them. Uh, hope that one of these will meet your needs and your plans for your future. Uh, Terrence will now take over and talk more about how to apply for these programs and what's needed to get started. I also just like to share that I'm always available with incoming students or applicants. If you do have questions about which program's right for you and, and just want to make sure you're in the right place, you can feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to speak with you either by email or phone or even in person. So here I'll turn it over to, to uh, Terrence. Okay, thank you, uh, Deborah. All right, so I would like to uh, spend some time and uh, talk uh, to you about uh, the admissions uh, process and how we st uh, help students uh, with uh, applying to the program and those first initial steps uh, before students get started. So um, you'll see here that our undergraduate programs are very unique. Um, they're upper division only courses uh, within the major. All of our students are transfer students. So typically um, they will be able to transfer from a regionally accredited school that can be from a state college or a junior college. Um, students must complete 90 quarter credits or 60 semester credits before entering the program. And the program runs as a cohort. Go to the next slide here. Okay, so um, this uh, talks about the Cascadia uh, Blended Enrollment Program, which I would like to uh, hand over uh, to Deborah, just in terms of, uh, she spoke a little bit about that earlier, but uh, if, would you like to continue on, Deborah? Sure, so yes, this is again offered only at our Washington campus, but we're very proud of it in that students do have the opportunity to start their program at Cascadia Community College, for those who aren't aware, this is fairly close by geographically to Bastyr, so it makes for an easy commute between, between campuses. Um, it's the same four years of coursework, but it's designed so that those first couple of years can be spread over the first three years. You get your associate degree at Cascadia and then your bachelor's at Bastyr, 
and you get to come and join us at Bastyr a year earlier. So there's actually some initial courses that you get to take in year two because the program has been designed to allow you to come uh, and start your program earlier. So for those of you local, um, please check this out and this might be the right opportunity for you. Thank you, Deborah. All right, so let's uh, spend a little bit of time just talking about what the prerequisites uh, would look like. Um, so typically the students uh, wanna have 90 credit hours um, students must complete uh, the basic proficiency in science requirements. So typically those courses are your general English, public speaking, um, nutrition, um, intro courses. Um, for a, a detailed description on what those courses are, feel free to reach out uh, to uh, an advisor um, to help you with those list of courses just to make sure um, that you have them all set before you apply to the program. Um, those uh, courses are very important and you wanna make sure that uh, you have them right um, uh, moving forward uh, into your application. And then those general education, uh, natural science, social science, arts and humanities uh, courses are within the, uh, the 90 credit hours uh, too as well. Um, students can uh, participate in the um, ACE program which is an online credit um, given toward uh, general electives. And so you'll see here, take a look at this look, this link um, in, your, in, your, in your free time uh, to figure out uh, what courses um, you can take to benefit uh, from that resource. And uh, like I said, feel free uh, to reach out uh, to an admissions advisor if you need any assistance um, in regards to that. Next slide. Okay, and then I uh, wanted to uh, let you know of the prerequisite equivalency transfer guide. Uh, this is a good resource because it allows the students to uh, link up uh, for our Washington, um, our California, and also to our Portland students, um, what uh, state schools and also to junior colleges are in your area and what those courses are at uh, the chosen school um, that you may be attending before you move uh, over to Bastyr. So this is a good link, a good resource that you can take advantage of uh, to find courses um, in your area or a school of your choosing uh, within uh, those three states. So once you have an understanding of those prerequisites, um, you can plan out um, how long you need to complete them and um, then also too, that in turn will help you uh, when you are planning uh, for when you will be applying to the program so, um, so you can start here at Bastyr. A um, couple good uh, deadlines uh, to uh, keep, uh, be aware of. Uh, February 1st is the priority uh, application deadline. Um, what students uh, can benefit from that is uh, being able to qualify for uh, Bastyr University uh, sc scholarships. Um, and also too, um, the application uh, opens up typically uh, October 1st. So if you're planning uh, for a fall 2019 uh, start date, um, that opens up October 1st. Um, talk to your admissions advisor uh, before you apply to the program. Uh, we're on a rolling um, application um, application start date. So um, we're working with students uh, throughout the year. Um, so, and you can apply to the program uh, through the uh, Bastyr University main website. And then what is required uh, for the application? Typically students will uh, submit a uh, $60 application fee. And just a side note, if you have uh, come in for a tour or an open house visit at any one of our campuses in Washington or California, um, we will waive your application fee. Um, and there is a place um, in the application where you will, uh, will, you will note um, that you've attended an open house or been on a tour and that will waive your fee. Personal statement, uh, resume, official transcripts from all of the institutions that you have attended, um, prerequisite completion plan, and then um, letters of recommendations 
um, are not required uh, for these programs. Um, in regards to the personal statement, uh, make sure that it is complete, well-written, make sure that you proofread uh, your work, uh, no gr grammatical or uh, punctuation errors. So just make sure that uh, you, um, you do your due diligence with that. Um, make sure that uh, when you are um, uh, uh, filling out this um, essay, um, make sure that you ask these, keep these questions in mind. Did you understand the field in which you are applying? Is the content appropriate? And also too, is the length appropriate? Uh, make sure that uh, um, it's one or two sentence, um, it's one or two sentences uh, do not suffice. Just make sure that you have about a thousand to 2000 words total um, within the uh, essay that you present. Um, what, makes a what makes a competitive applicant? We don't compare uh, students uh, or applicants uh, to each other. We look at you as an individual. Um, so we're looking for uh, the, follow the following items, uh, that you have uh, college level grades, um, that your grades for your basic proficiency in science requirements and uh, your chemistry and biology are uh, really well, really strong. Um, so make sure um, that you stay away from, uh, from um, anything uh, that uh, might not be passing, C minuses. You wanna make sure that you have a strong, uh, some strong grades to represent. So A's and B's always look really good. Um, and then also to a 2.5 uh, minimum GPA, um, you know, is a minimum GPA, but the average GPA uh, for these programs is a 3.4. And then most important that you also to have a strong personal statement. So in regards to the length uh, to process the application, about two to three weeks uh, from when the time that all your documents have been received. So when you apply to the program, make sure you reach out again uh, to your uh, admissions advisor who you've been working with um, to let them know that your application is complete and they will continue working with you um, through the statuses you know, of your application. Um, uh, in some cases, we may put uh, your application on hold until you have you know, a sufficient amount of uh, prerequisites complete. Um, and then make sure that also too, you have current and official um, updated official transcripts um, when you um, submit, submit a completed uh, application. And this is our uh, beautiful group of, uh, of advisors here at Bastyr. Uh, feel free to reach out to Mary or Courtney at our Seattle uh, location, and then uh, my director, Shannon, and also to that's me. Um, we work here in the San Diego location. And here's um, some general um, um, email addresses and then uh, phone numbers to get in contact with you if you need to uh, communicate uh, with us um, um, by email or also to phone at our, any one of our uh, locations. And then, all right, so that's uh, the end of uh, the admissions uh, portion of our um, presentation today. Um, now let's open the floor up uh, to some questions. So I have a few here um, that I will uh, direct uh, to you, uh, Deborah. Um, the first question is, um, how much would a student in the nutrition and exercise science program get to learn in the culinary and nutrition kitchen? That's a great question. So the definitely you would have the whole foods production class would be a part of your required curriculum. And then if you chose, you could take some of the culinary courses as electives that uh, are there. Uh, you have to take a certain number of electives. And so you could choose to take those in the culinary uh, kitchen if you'd like. Um, the chef's pantry courses and the, the cooking demonstration are a couple that are fairly popular. Um, but yes, we also are teaching a, a bread making class uh, right now. So definitely, um, and, oh, and also an Ayurveda nutrition course that's taught in the kitchen. That's also a very popular one here. Those are all taught here in the, in the Kenmore campus. So as a nutrition and exercise science student, you could take any of those courses and uh, we would welcome you to do that. 
Great, thank you, Deborah. Um, the second question we have is if you could talk a little bit about a typical classroom size uh, for the undergraduate program. Is it is it large, small? Sure, that's a great question. So for the basic science courses, the biochemistry, the anatomy and physiology, um, those courses you're sharing with some of the other program undergraduates as well. So those are typically maybe 50 students um, at most. But then when it comes down to your individual courses, uh, like the cultural perspectives, maybe there's 30 to 40 in your classroom. And then when you zero down into your smaller um, specific program courses, that may be closer to the 10 to 15 student ratio. So kind of if you think about the big uh, courses that everyone takes, you're going to have a few more folks. But then when you get down to your individual courses, they, it gets much smaller. Uh, so food science, uh, the maximum that our kitchen can even hold is 24. For our culinary uh, courses for our students, we, we narrow that down even more. So definitely, uh, I would say between 20 and 30 max for the majority of, of the courses. Great. Thank you, Deborah. Another uh, student asked, um, can I work during the program? That's a great question, and uh, we typically keep those statistics. I think generally 90% of our students or more at any given time are working. So yes, we expect that students need to feed themselves and they need to, to have uh, some, some finances behind them. So we do, uh, you know, weekends are, are generally open most of the time where students work. We also have opportunities for work study. So um, here in Kenmore, students you know, participate. They work in our dining commons. They can work in the bookstore. Uh, they can do a variety of things here on campus as well. So uh, yes, we assume that students will have to work. Of course, we always want your grades to be good and, and we want you to succeed academically. So uh, there needs to be a balance between work and school. Uh, we've also had students who just simply need to work and so they choose to extend their bachelor's program over a longer period of time and do it in you know they're here at Bastyr maybe three or four years instead of the two and while that may seem um, un, un, uh, attractive to some for others in order to fit the schooling into their lifestyle that is what works and so we will work with them to do that so uh, we do uh, uh, honor students need to work and, and work with that as much as we can um, with that said our classes are all Monday through Friday daytime however and so work typically would be evenings or weekends okay thank you very much uh, we have a fourth question here. If somebody is doing the Bachelor's of Science in Nutrition program, but is interested in taking some herbal science courses, are they able to take electives in that discipline? They are. So there is a certain number of the required electives that need to be taken in the nutrition department, but the rest can be taken uh, in other departments. And we frequently have students who are interested in herbs. That is a specialty area for us here in Kenmore in that we do have an undergraduate program in botanical medicine. Uh, and we have our herb garden here, so that is very common for students to want to take some of those courses at the basic level. And that's perfectly uh, fine. Okay, great. And I think we also do have just time for one more. Um, how does Bastyr uh, support their graduates and alumni um, in continuing their education or um, uh, career opportunities uh, beyond completion of this program? That's a great question. We have a new alumni director and she is setting up some new tools and some new resources uh, to work with our students. And so that is uh, something that we're constantly asking our graduating students what they need. We're supporting them and figuring out how to help them to get a, a solid resume and in building the skills they need to interview. Uh, we do you know, support students with job opportunities that come through. I just had someone who emailed me a couple weeks ago. They're looking for a student. So any, any opportunities like that, we, we uh, are a graduate rather, I'm sorry, I'm looking for a graduate. So we do you know, share opportunities for jobs with students. Uh, so Bastyr does have an alumni webpage and, and board, um, and we do our best to help students to find that, that right position for them. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Deborah. We really appreciate uh, your presentation today and uh, you answering all those really good questions. Um, I'd like to just follow up and say if you have any questions, um, admissions questions for me. Uh, my name is uh, Terrence Peterson. I work here at our San Diego location. And then my, my 
personal, or not my personal, but uh, my uh, direct contact is 858-246-9715. Uh, and I can be reached at uh, tpeterson at bastier.edu. And uh, Deborah, would you like to uh, finish off with uh, any of your information? I would love to. So my email is D as in Deborah Boutan, B-O-U-T-I-N, at bastier.edu. Uh, my phone number directly is 425-602-3124. And uh, again, happy to answer any questions. We are always so proud of our undergrads and, and the, the successes that they have. Uh, so many of them do go on and do further study. Um, and we are always as pleased as we could be when an undergrad comes and applies to a graduate program here because then we know we've done well. Uh, so we, we welcome uh, you and, and hope that you will find one of these programs to be just right for you. Thank you, Deborah. I'd like to uh, thank all our prospective students uh, for participating in our webinar today and sending your uh, great questions. We really are appreciative of uh, you listening in and, um, and giving us your time. So looking forward to working with you. Um, please let us know if you need anything else. You have a great day.